Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah, an indie game developer, and in this video, I want to share with you some game prototypes I've been creating as I search for my next big project. Big, beefy projects are awesome. You learn so much when working on them. Out of the dozens of games I've made, most have been brought to life in a couple days to a few weeks max, except the Fire of Belief, which took three months. He almost killed me, which was also a three month long journey. And finally, the Dreadful Whispers, which is my first commercial game and which took me about eight months to create. And now I'm really back at square one, at the start of a new adventure. The question that haunts my dreams is, what should I pour all my energy into? I can feel very restless and almost anxious if I'm not actively working on some project which I am passionate about. I have this creative energy which must be used, however the prospect of making a whole new big game from A to Z can be quite daunting. I just need to look at all my Dreadful Whispers devlogs to remember the slow, at times wonderful, but also grueling and frustrating journey I went through. And to go through all of that again, it's like staring at the summit of Mount Everest on some beach by the sea. The truth is, every game making experience will be different, and though they're extremely challenging at times, it comes with real satisfaction and a feeling of fulfillment. And the rose tinted memories I now have of bringing whole worlds to life is worth the struggle every time. With that said, sitting down and trying to come up with my next massive project does not work well at all. Because again, it's too daunting, and it feels like the idea needs to be absolutely perfect if I'm to work on it for so long. And perfect ideas rarely come to mind. Besides, there's no real way of knowing if a game is interesting unless you create a quick, rough version of it and try it. And even better, have other people give it a go. So I'm on a quest to create lots of small game prototypes until I find a project I really click with and feel like I could improve and expand on it greatly. This removes the unnecessary pressure of finding an amazing idea, gets me feeling creative and happy, is a lot of fun and I'm open to failure because I'm just making a quick prototype. It isn't supposed to be huge or even cool, it's just an idea I try to quickly bring to life, see how it does and then either continue working on it or drop it. I'm only using a few days, that's all I need to test an idea and see if the core is solid or uninspiring. So the first prototypes I was working on were card games. After making all those fantasy horror cards during Halloween, it felt only right to make something set in this universe. However, creativity can be a very fickle thing, it doesn't always show up when you want it to. It will eventually, you just have to be patient. So yeah, I didn't feel very inspired. I had a lot of fun making these cards, but wasn't sure what to do with them next. After a healthy dose of procrastination, I began work on something, but I won't go into details, it just felt like a project I would find no fun working on. So from there, I went back to the comforting process of drawing and made a couple tree cards. I wanted to make a game for the Team Trees movement and had written down on paper what sounded like a clever puzzle card game. It really ended up feeling like a series of primary school math problems though, but I'm glad I worked on it. It was a failed experiment, but as always, motivation comes with momentum, so my creative juices were flowing once again. I really want to make a card game, but it just didn't feel like the right thing. As I said, with creative work, patience can be key, so I'll just let my subconscious do the work now while I set my eyes on another idea in my handy game idea book, a strategy game. I've hardly ever dabbled in that unique and wonderful genre, so I ended up with a quirky little game called Little Humans. It's about sacrificing squishy people avoiding spiky moths and gathering resources to lay traps and build tiny houses which magically spawn more humans you can use for further gory purposes. It's a weird game that definitely involves some decision making, but is mostly a lot of multitasking. I uploaded it on itch.io and in the short community post I did about the game, feedback was generally very positive and filled with 
ideas on ways to expand and improve this creation. So yeah, I'm happy with this little prototype and maybe I can turn this into something really great in the future. But for now, I was happy to keep working on small projects and see where they take me next. On a side but important note, while working on these prototypes, I was also making a 2D strategy game tutorial series with my brother Liam. This is of course me destroying the nice cozy atmosphere by promoting our course, which will teach you how to create art, how to code a lovely turn-based experience, make effects and much, much more. Link in the description. Which brings us to Tunnels, the next little game prototype I created in about one short day. It's very challenging, probably too hard in fact, but the concept is pretty interesting and I'm happy with the visual style. One thing I do to get ideas for my prototypes is write a short list of 10 unique themes, then grab a dice with 10 sides and roll it to randomly pick one theme from the list. As I've said in the past, having constraints can be one of the best ways to avoid creative block and choice paralysis. It's also a lot of fun knowing that a simple roll of a dice will dictate what you create and how that might impact your future. Who knows, if I'd rolled a 4, perhaps I would have landed on the theme which would trigger the idea for a masterpiece, but instead I rolled the 5. With that said, Tunnels isn't amazing, but it's interesting, and I think the main goal with these prototypes is to take risks which can result in pieces of garbage or nuggets of goals, and really innovate, have fun innovating. And lastly, I've been working on a game called Wonderfully Juicy. Again, with innovation and risk-taking in mind, I'm trying to make a fun, physics-based game. Something I've never really done before. It isn't finished yet, but I think it might end up pretty interesting. You spawn squishies which bounce around the world, and your job is to take them from point A to B using various machines and platforms. I'll definitely finish this and post it on itch.io and Newgrounds when I'm done. Initially, this wasn't even a game, just me having fun making satisfying, juicy things in Unity. I basically built a toy and then figured out what I could maybe do with it, which shows that you don't need to have everything figured out before starting. I would say that 80% of the games I end up finishing come from half-baked ideas which I expand and polish and think about as I go. So yes, I think that starting is actually harder than finishing at times, for me anyway. You need to overcome procrastination and motivation issues, get past creative block and overthinking, and be consistent. So my current solution is to just have fun and make small, potentially crappy games, but which I'm confident will lead to something great further down the line. These just plant seeds of confidence and inspiration in your minds, and they'll flourish and grow, trust me. With that said, I'll keep creating, you can subscribe to follow me on this journey, and again, if you want to learn how to make games yourself, then look no further than the three structured Udemy courses I have made with my brother. There's one for complete beginners to programming, game art, and Unity, one which will teach you how to make a complete top-down shooter from A to Z, and our latest which brings you through the process on how to make a 2D turn-based strategy game. They all have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no way you lose with this deal. Okay, many thanks to my patrons for their wonderful support every single month. These people are engraved in Blackthorn Prod history forever. Cheers, guys.